Hi, I'm Seb and I make stuff. This build started out as some recycled paper making for some classic looking parchment and turned into a literal wild goose chase. So originally I was only going to make some paper and play around with some other things to decorate it. But once I got started on this, I went down a rabbit hole. And before I know it, I was collecting goose feathers and making ink from flowers in my garden. So first things first, I had to build the frame for making my paper. This is a classic technique that a lot of us would have done in school, and it's a lot of fun. To begin, we're going to need a frame. I'm going to build my frame using cheap wooden photo frames that I purchased from my local Kmart for a couple of dollars each. Take out all the bits and pieces for the general photo frame, just keeping the outer parts. I chose to use photo frames to make sure that these match up perfectly. Alternatively, you could easily build something in the same frame shape. Next up, we're gonna need a mesh of some type. I am using this stuff that I've used on previous builds. It is a fly screen from a window. I'm just going around the edge and stapling this down. I'm gonna add quite a lot of staples to keep this nice and tight. Now that we've got the frame built, it's time to give the paper a go. So we're going to start by tearing up a whole heap of scrap paper. A good way of scrapping some of those old bits of paper and stuff you've used in old games and making something fresh out of them. As I tear this up, I'm throwing it all into a jar before adding in a little bit of water and blending this up into a slurry. So I learned very quickly that I'm going to need a lot more slurry than this. So I ground up a whole heap of cardboard. This gave me a nice dark texture. Now that the water had enough slurry in there, it was time to dunk in my frame and see what I collected. Once I was happy with the amount of slurry in the frame, I had to open it up, tip it out onto a bit of felt, in my case an old t-shirt and squeeze out all the extra liquid. And now for the moment of truth. And with a little bit of finessing, it worked. And after leaving it out in the sun for about a day, I had a few pieces of parchment. To make something different, I threw some flower petals from my garden into the mix. This came out awesome, but did take a little bit of fiddling to get them to sit exactly how I wanted them. And it was around this time that I started to get cocky. After using some plants in my paper, I decided to make some paper using nothing but plants. So I chopped up some bamboo leaves, added some water, ground them up, boiled the fibers, and used this to attempt to make a purely plant sheet of parchment. So I go about the normal methods of making the slurry, adding it into the water and then using my frame. Once I carefully sponged this one off, it came out great. I didn't have enough for another purely plant piece of parchment, so I added in some paper to make a bit of a mixed batch. It didn't take too long in the sun to dry, and I was actually really impressed with how this purely plant-based piece of parchment that I managed to make from my own backyard turned out. It's beautiful, but rather weak, but I do have some plans for it. The basic recycled paper came out pretty interesting. It's gonna be fun to use this as a general kind of parchment, but my favorite by far is the stuff that includes the flower petals. This stuff turned out awesome and has a much more fantastical feel. So after I made my own paper, I decided if I'm gonna make this from scratch, I have to go all out. So next up was making my own ink and then followed by a quill. I'm an avid gardener, so there was a decent option of flowers to pick from. 
Alternatively, you can just go out for a walk and see what you find along the way. Now that we have a collection of colourful flower petals, we are going to prepare them. Basically getting all the brightest colourful parts, adding them into a jar and crushing them up with some water and leaving them overnight to soak. Now you can take a cheesecloth or something similar and pour out the soaked liquid, making sure to squeeze anything extra out of the petals. before grabbing a small jar and adding some gum arabic before pouring in your liquid. The gum arabic will help this to hold and become an actual ink. Now just shake it up and add a clove to help it resist mold and hold longer with age, at least according to medieval ink text. Once I'd done this with all of my inks, I decided to give them a test. The only ones that actually came out any good were the passion fruit and the marigold. The inks were a bit hit and miss, but they did come together quite well. And now that we've got them done, it's time to move on and make something to draw with. So it's time to make a quill. And after some research, it turns out that the perfect feather is a goose feather. And I just so happened to know where there are some geese. So I went down to the local park to see what I could collect. And once I had a good bounty of feathers, it was time to take them home and hit them with some isopropyl alcohol to disinfect them. Once I had them nice and clean, it was time to start cutting up some quills. I used a few different tutorials that I found online to make the quill shape, but essentially I just tried to copy the metal quill that I had already purchased. I found very quickly that a sharp fresh blade made all the difference when working with the feathers. And once it was cut, it just needed a little bit of a clean up before it was time to give it a test. I grabbed out some black ink from a cheap calligraphy set that I would bought and tested out the quill. It worked pretty well for a first attempt. The cuts were a bit loose so it tended to leak. So I grabbed another feather and decided to have a second attempt. I plan on doing a larger, more in-depth video on the quill in the future if you guys want to see it, as I found some awesome feathers since this point that I'd like to make into some fancy decorated prop quills. And as you can see, with my second attempt, I got the cut far more accurate. So this time, the pen held the ink nicely and could write full paragraphs from one dunk in the inkwell. Now it was time to test everything out together using some of the homemade paper, my homemade inks and delivering it through the homemade quill. Everything here was made from scratch other than the black ink. So there we have a completely homemade magic scroll. Throwing in the alchemical symbols for any of the requirements of the spell is a nice touch for anyone who knows what they're doing in their Dungeons and Dragons game. Honestly, this whole thing came together way better than I was expecting. Being able to find the goose feathers so easily and just how simply this actually worked, I managed to get it to write on my second attempt at cutting one. Look, the writing is scratchy and messy, but that kind of adds to the effect in my opinion. Also, it's just a lot of fun knowing that every single part of this I made from scratch, except for the black ink. But I will be trying that in a future episode.
This whole thing was way easier than I thought. Everything came together far quicker and I thought there was gonna be a lot more failed attempts along the way, but one or two tries and everything worked pretty well. As long as you do just a little bit of research, it's fairly easy to do some of these ancient techniques.